welcome to edupedia world in this module we will learn about the land reform policy and measures of land reforms land reforms so what is the meaning of land reforms land reforms primarily refers to change in the ownership of land holdings land reform measures have been introduced by various underdeveloped and developing countries for attaining a rational land distribution pattern and viable farming structure land reforms aims at abolition of intermediaries and bringing the actual cultivator in direct contact with the states land reform policy measures was implemented for the growth of agriculture sector after independence it was concerned with these reforms related to land ownership and land holding in a broader sense land reform implies measures to reform necessary to raise agriculture productivity which include reforms relating to fixation of rent on land abolition of intermediaries land tenure system and pattern of agriculture land holdings so land reform aims at redistributing ownership holding from the view point of social justice and reorganizing operational holdings from the view point of optimum utilization of land there was a great need for land reforms in country like india where majority of its population still depends on agriculture land reforms were needed to achieve the objective of equity in agriculture so this is the meaning of land reform policy now we come to measures of land reforms as you can see in the chart that it is divided into three major parts that is abolition of intermediaries tenancy reforms and reorganization of agriculture first we will discuss abolition of intermediaries the britishers had created a large army of intermediaries in the form of zamindars mahalwars and jyotwars they collected rent from the cultivators and deposited a portion of it to the government as land revenue the cultivators were subjected to ruthless exploitation consequently after independence the land reform measures in the form of abolition of intermediaries was a primary concern of the government this resulted in passing of the common land such as forest wasteland etc to the state government statistics shows that in all 173 million acres of land was acquired from the intermediaries and as a result about 2 crores tenant were brought into direct relationship with the state the intermediaries that is the zamindars etc were compensated in lieu of the land taken by the government next measure of land reform is tenancy reforms The most important feature was that the zamindars never cultivated land by themselves rather it was rented in the tenants consequently the tenants were at the whims and moods of the zamindars the tenant reforms consist of the following dimension that is regulation of rent in that the state passed legislation for determining the rent which was to be paid by the cultivators then security of tenure in this also the majority of the states enacted legislation to provide security for tenants and ownership right for tenants in this some of the states have enacted legislation to confer rights of ownership on tenants while in some other states the tenants have been given the rights of ownership and resultantly asked to pay suitable compensation to landlords so these are the tenancy reforms now we come to third measure that is reorganization of agriculture as you can see that reorganization of agriculture is also divided into three part that is sealing of land holdings consolidation of holdings and cooperative farmings so in sealing of land holdings in order to promote the equity in agriculture sealing on land holdings were implemented it refers to maximum and minimum limits to the size of holding which can be owned by the individual by implementing this policy the government can acquire the surplus land 
which can be further redistributed among landless labor, small and marginal farmers. Till 1997, the government had redistributed about 72 million acres of land among landless farmers. Second thing is that consolidation of land holdings. Since there has been a serious problem due to subdivision and fragmentation of land holdings, resulting consolidation of land holdings was a logical necessity. In this policy, the small scattered pieces of land can be clubbed into a one compact unit of land which can be further exchanged for land at one place. Initially, voluntary cooperative societies were formed for consolidation of land holdings. But after the legislation was enacted for compulsory consolidation and land holdings, so far only 60.2 million hectares of land has been covered under consolidation, which is merely one third of the total cropped area in the country. The bulk of the land consolidated has been in the state of Punjab, Haryana, UP, Maharashtra, Bihar and Urissa. There were many reasons why the progress has been very slow, such as since quality of soil differ from land to land, then the farmer is generally attached to their land emotionally and sentimentally. In many areas, reliable and up-to-date land records are not available and many states lack adequate and trained staff to carry out this program. So these are the some factors which resulted in the slow progress of consolidation of land holdings and the third part is cooperative farming cooperative farming refers to farming practices where farming operations are conducted cooperatively under the system farmers pool their land individual farmer keeps ownership right on their respective piece of land they distribute the profits among all the members of the society the main advantage of this system is that small and marginal farmers can reap profits of large-scale farming in an effective method to tackle of problems created by small, uneconomic holdings due to their subdivision and fragmentation. In addition, the marketable surplus of food grains and industrial raw materials can be obtained more easily from large farms and can be transported to the market on a bulk basis in an easier way. The progress got only limited success in India. After discussing the measures of land reforms, now we come to the causes of slow progress of land reforms. What are the causes behind it? Although the initial beginning of land reforms was good, yet the reforms could not make substantial progress due to the following factors. First is lack of political will. Strong political will, determination and courage are critically significant for implementation of land reforms. Enactment of progressive measures of land reforms and their efficient implementation requires hard political decision and effective political support, direction and control. In the reference of socio-economic conditions prevalent in the rural areas of the country, no concrete progress can be expected in the absence of required political will taking into consideration the character of political power structure. It implies that duty was inconsistent within their benefits. Next point is snags in legislation. It means inadequate definition of tenants. Since considerable number of tenancies in India are oral and informal, consequently due to incomplete land records, they are not in a position to prove that they are the actual tillers of the soil. Third cause is transfer of lands to family members. To escape the laws relating to land sealing, the zamindars indulged in large-scale transfer of land to their family members. It was because of snags in the definition of personal cultivation in the laws. This reduced the effectiveness of the sealing lands significantly. 
Fourth point is definition of personal cultivation. The definition of personal cultivation was not, not satisfactory. As per legal provisions, personal supervision was taken to be a part of personal cultivation. And even this does not require supervision by the landlord himself. Rather, it was sufficient if the supervision was done by the member of the landlord's family in lieu of presence of landlord. Next causes significant limits for personal cultivation. Due to defective definition of personal cultivation, intermediaries were permitted to retain a significant area of land for personal cultivation. This enabled zamindars to retain large areas of land for cultivation, thus defeating the ba basic purpose of zamindari abolition. Next point is the problem of voluntary surrender. The landlords created unfavorable condition for the tenants. That is, they had to voluntarily surrender the land cultivated by them. The tenants were threatened, beaten up and mentally harassed. The tenants had no option but surrendered their land voluntarily. And the last cause is heterogeneity in sealing lands. The levels of sealing as among states and within areas of some states differed significantly till 1972 which created lot of confusion and dispute. After this period there was homogeneity in sealing laws means that is same in every state. However by that time a significant damage has already been done. So these are some of the causes why the land reforms doesn't work properly in India. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.